Hello, what is up Bengals fans? And I'm not talking about Bengal, even though he is pretty dope. And I was just listening to him and Broshmo's new mock draft that they came out, which was fire. Any which way, we had the Cincinnati Bengals today for a seven round mock draft. So it's about to get serious up in here. We're going to talk about this roster, everything they've done post free agency. Let's start with the free agent signings and what has Duke done in so far. One of my favorite actual GMs in the NFL. I think he's a really, really good GM. The way he structures his contracts, the players he he brings in and of course he's had some hits and misses as a drafter everybody does he's not a perfect drafter overall I feel like he's a very good GM the way he does his contracts starting with the offense Zach Moss comes in here from the Indianapolis Colts I love this signing four million a season absolutely sign me up Zach Moss was great filling in for JT looked like a starter and a stud so on a cheap deal I like this better I mean Tony Pollard's a good running back but it was double the money I think this was a really good deal for the Bengals filling in for Joe Mixon Trent Trenton Irvin was a really nice solid depth piece for them filling in for injuries with T Higgins etc you know for Tyler Boyd now gone to in free agency have him as a depth piece you're gonna need to add here too Tight end room is filled out. Mike Gusecki comes in here on a one-year deal as another receiving option with Tanner Hudson, who's also re-signed. And Hudson was good, too, for them as a receiving bat. You got your blocker, and Drew Sample is a really good blocker and an in-line guy who's also back on a three-year deal. So their tight end room's pretty filled out. I think it's still had some more competition there. Tackle-wise, you get Trent Brown coming over from the New England Patriots. Slide him back over to the right tackle position, which he's very familiar with. And now you have a monster tackle to a pun intended. Love this deal. I thought he was going to get like a $10 million, one-year $10 million contract. Nope, under $5 million. Only two is guaranteed. This is a great deal. It's a really good deal. And then on the defense side of the ball, Sheldon Rankins... This was a problem for them was the lack of interior pass rush and consistency. Uh, you know, other than Trey Hendrickson, who gets after the quarterback? Well, you had in Sheldon Rankins. And a part of that was DJ Reader being injured for a good chunk of the season. Nonetheless, Sheldon Rankins was a phenomenal pass rusher for the Houston Texans. And he gets after the quarterback. So you're trying to add some more oomph, some more pass rush. Well, Sheldon Rankins is exactly what they need. And it's a very fair contract. Akeem Davis Gaither, a great special teamer, core special team leader. So you have him back on a one-year deal. Geno Stone, Von Bell in the safety room. Von Bell on a one-year vet minimum deal. Love that signing. Geno Stone, two years, seven mil average, 14 total. Heck yes, sign me up as a deep free safety. They had some coverage busts at times. Well, you're going to add a nice pick specialist here at, what, seven interceptions this past year. Let's hope he can do that once again. Allows maybe Daxon Hill to move more into the slot position or at least compete with Mike Hilton. Let's go on to the roster itself talking about the team needs offensive line is a number one priority for me so yes this will be something we address early in the draft i'll tell you right now spoiler alert in in terms of needs which positions should we look at tackle wise i'm not going to mess with the left tackle position right now i think orlando brown's still in a contract for a couple years really can't get out of the deal which is fine he's a solid left tackle right tackle trent brown coming in definitely helps them out However, is it still something that, you know, Marius Mims, J.C. Latham at number 18 overall, would I go after them? Absolutely. Like, those are guys are still very much in the play for this team. I don't care if they're sitting the entire year, whatever. Like, thinking about the future at that tackle position is very much in play for me. Other areas, though, I think that the interior might be the biggest area of need right now for the team. If you're talking about just pressing red flag alerts, the interior is the biggest need for me. Cordell Volgen, while he has improved this past season, going into year three now, and there's more upside with him to be a starter, still view that as a spot that is a pretty big need for the team. And I would love him as a depth player on the interior. So ideally, he's a backup that can fill in for injuries rather than a starter. Ted Karras is a free agent as well. So thinking about the future at center is a very realistic possibility. Alex Kappa, and you know, he didn't have his best season in my opinion. Just watching the games, I feel like he had some really, some bad games. He also had some good ones. And he is still in a contract next year. So that's maybe not the biggest priority for me, but it is something you could consider because his contract is cuttable. So if he has another bad year, or he doesn't have a bad year, but if he had a bad year, then you can move on from him with his contract. But no matter what, left guard slash center are areas they need to look at in this draft as a priority. Wide receiver wise, wide receiver three is definitely a priority, especially if T. Higgins is unable to, if they're unable to retain him. I know there are some rumblings going on all around. He's going to get traded or whatever. I don't, I don't know. We'll see what happens 
Overall, I'm not going to speculate on that. This wide receiving core with Jamar Chase and T. Higgins is a lead on its own. Finding that wide receiver three slash that insurance policy just in case T. Higgins is not re-signed as that wide receiver two is going to be something I prioritize in this draft. Tight end should be pretty good. I will add somebody here, though, because Tanner Hudson and Mike Isecki are only on one-year deals. So finding a receiving option to go along with Drew Sample. And I list Drew Sample as a 65. I mean, he's a really good blocking tight end, so it's hard to value that sometimes, but he's a really good inline blocker. Let's go on to the running back room, which I don't view as a high priority. You could add somebody. That it depends on, you know, who's on the board, who falls to you, and maybe that mid-round range. You could look at that, right? I'm not excluding drafting a Trey Benson or one of those top backs, but for me, Zach Moss is a starting caliber running back, and what he showed, I think he can be a full-time starting running back. Chase Brown, good receiving flashes this past season. Maybe we'll add somebody else late in the draft. Quarterback, this is obviously, you got your franchise quarterback, just got to keep him healthy with the offensive line. And find, you know, drafting a third quarterback at the end of the draft, that's basically what I'm going to be doing here. On to the defense side of the ball, defensive line interior is a priority. Finding maybe a nose tackle slash a future interior player, DJ Hill going into the last year of his deal, you could upgrade in general. Sheldon Rankins, I feel good about. Zach Carter, don't feel so good about. So they need some depth, if nothing else, but I'm going to be looking to draft somebody in that DJ Reader role. Edge wise, could draft for the future. Sam Hubbard is still under contract next year. He could be cut. He's another one that you could get out of his contract. Just lose minimum money. You got Miles Murphy. We'll see how he continues to develop. Showed some flashes. You got Cam Sample, Joseph Asai, all free agents. Overall, edge-wise, I would just say maybe mid-round, mid to late round, you draft another edge rusher to be some more, you know, be that fourth guy of the future with Sample and Asai and Gunter being free agents after this year. Not a huge priority. And then on to the linebacking core here. Also not a huge priority. They need some depth though, right? future need so drafting somebody mid to late that's something i'm going to be looking at here you got your starters though logan wilson jermaine pratt and akeem davis gaither as your third on to the cornerback room another area where i feel confident you got your starters you got a lot of youth this would be something that they still have like 24 million dollars ish in change and money I would bring in a veteran because they've got a lot of youth on the outside, but they don't really have that veteran leadership. So that's my view on this is bringing a veteran more than a early. They don't really need to spend another early draft pick on this. So that is my view on this. I will bring in somebody at the end, you know, mid to late portion of this draft is some more depth, more competition. That is definitely something they need to do. I do want to mention that I have Daxon Hill listed as the slot, which, you know, Stone coming in. I think he's going to play more of that free safety role this year in Lou Amarunu's defense that does play a lot of middle field close defenses single high coverages and they also mix they do a lot of inverted cover two looks play a lot of zone off zone coverages they mix it up and they'll like on third downs they'll go to man coverage and they do they, Lou is one of the more interchangeable defenses for sure but Daxon Hill I view him more as a slot guy watching him early in his career I love his movement skills I 100% view him as a slot guy who can also play safety but I like him a lot right now in the slot at least compete with Mike Hilton be that that backup for Hilton and in rotational player and if he wins the job in training career then great you know that's Mike Hilton you know, you could move on from him. I think Mike Hilton's still a really good slot player. And finally, the safety room looking really good. You got your three tandem and Geno Stone is your deep safety. Jordan Battle is your box. Von Bell who can rotate in and out. You got Tyson Anderson too. So overall, this safety room looks great. Not a big concern from me. So the moment has arrived. It is draft time. And starting off with my number one pick at 18 for the Bengals, it's Graham Barton. And I thought long and hard about this one. And that's what she said. Michael Scott out here somewhere. But anyway, uh, but for me, it comes down to interior being such a big priority. And while I look at this tackle position, I could say Mary Smims, JC Latham, very much realistic plays on the board at 18. If one of those guys is available, 100% I'm considering it. I still feel like the interior though is the precedence, the area that they need to improve upon the most right now. Trent Brown is a very capable starter. We're going to invest in that right tackle position. We still need to draft there, but Graham Barton adds a guy day one. You plug and play at that left guard position. Could be the long-term center since Ted Cross is a free agent after the season two if he's not retained or if they don't sign anybody. Barton gives you that versatility. They need to improve this interior. They need a rock solid interior for Joe Burrow. Keep that interior pocket clean because Joe can maneuver, right? He, he knows how to maneuver the pocket. He's got good pocket presence. If you can keep that interior clean, keep that line of sight clean for him, I think he's going to distribute the ball even better than he already is. So I want to go ahead, solidify that interior. Graham Barton is going to be a huge piece of that. And I went back and watched this film. I'm like, dude, this guy, I don't think he's going to make it to the 20s. I really don't. He is so good. On to round number two, though. Roman Wilson, wide receiver, Michigan, the Wolverine. 
He's going to be that speedy slot receiver to fill in for Tyler Boyd here, add some more help in this wide receiving core. He's just going to be a nice chain mover for them. He's going to be that underneath weapon. Obviously, you have your number one wide receiver, and you still have T. Higgins as well. So you've got an elite core on the outside as long as T. Higgins is still here. But Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, you add in Roman Wilson into the slot. And I feel like he's that missing piece. Of course, he's got some limitations. He's, I don't know if he's going to be this dynamic, you know, big time, go up and get it receiver, right? That's really not his game. And that's fine. He's going to be that chain mover, as I was saying, in the slot. On to round number three. And we're going to take the monster from Texas. Hook him horns. Tavondre Sweat as that run defender monster in the middle. And somebody that's going to help them out fill that DJ reader role. Now you're saying to yourself, wait a minute. Tavondre Sweat in the third round? Well, the DWI is going to drop his draft stock i'm hearing other things like he played the season at 380 pounds and weights a serious issue i'm hearing he's a party animal too like a lot of things coming out on him these are things we're seeing guys that they fall for little things look at dewan jones falling to the third round year last season for just little things it is serious so i do think there's a real chance he falls to at minimum the third round we'll see where he ends up going but i feel like this would be a great spot to take a chance on to vondre sweat on the interior moving on to our next third round pick Caden wallace from penn state a guy that i'm a huge fan of somebody that maybe a little underrated considering we all talk about olu fashanu but this guy's got good lateral mobility as well i think he's actually a better hand technician right now than Olu is well, he's an older prospect he's like three years older than Olu is but somebody that I love his hand technique I love his punch timing just sometimes they get beat to the edge maybe just lack of timing or gets a little upright too in his stance overall really like his lateral agility and I think he can be a developmental right tackle behind Trent Brown for a season and maybe be the long-term starter you never know taking a chance here at the tackle position if nothing else is a great swing tackle next pick Cedric Johnson from Old Miss adding another guy off the edge get some more depth for them and he's got a lot of the tools man he's got good explosives good speed and somebody that you can develop and he's got plenty enough frame there so he's a very movable piece on that defensive line if you can put some pass rush tools on him put a pass rush plan he's just really inconsistent as a pass rusher right now so there is some pot untapped potential with cedric johnson Eric All, our next pick in the fifth round. I'm going to take a tight end that if he was healthy, he'd be a day two pick 100% in my eyes. He's got all the athletic tools. He's a good blocker as well. And, you know, Iowa tight end. I mean, he was former Michigan. He really, you know, transferred over to Iowa. And it just comes down to the spinal surgery, the ACL injury. Those are big question marks with his game. But the talent is there to be a really, really solid a minimum tight end two and a nice receiving threat for them to learn by Ngeseki and Hudson. On to our first sixth round pick, Darius Muisau from UCLA linebacker. He's a tough-nosed dude, a great run defender. I think he can compete as that third linebacker and also offer some more special teams capability because he's just going to hunt you down, man. He's got good vertical burst. He's not the most twitched-up guy. He's not going to be somebody you maybe want to put man-to-man -man coverage on, but they don't do that a whole ton of Lou Amarumo's defense, so I'm not super worried about that. I love his instincts, and I think he's going to be a nice rotational player and maybe a long-term starter. You never know. On to Quantes Stiggers, Toronto Argonauts. In the cornerback, the big-time story, man, the work he's put in the resilience but the dude's got a lot of potential man really a fun prospect to watch he's got good burst and somebody that you know why i didn't see a whole ton of press man coverage and there's limited tape out on him out there overall he's somebody that you know from off coverage he was a ball hawking machine so you add in another playmaker into the room that can be a fourth fifth sixth corner and compete for a roster spot on to the seventh round i'm going blake watson from memphis and they produce some good running backs through the years blake watson gonna be another receiving back to add in there at least give you some competition so that's really what it is with chase brown and zach moss at a third fourth fourth running back into the room but he's super dynamic on screens get the ball in his hands he's a receiving threat and somebody that also is an explosive guy now I didn't quite see the level of you know change of direction or quite the explosiveness that he put up on in the combine but definitely a guy you take a chance on here at the end of the draft add some more competition let's go on to our final pick of the draft Austin Reed from Western Kentucky quarterback and he set some big time records there at Western Kentucky and him and Malachi Corley had a really nice connection. Overall, Austin Reed as a distributor of the football, he's a pocket passer. That's what he is, but he's a good pocket passer at that and understands how to read coverages. Doesn't don't think he has the big time arm. He's definitely not an elite athlete by any standards. 
but somebody that may be behind Jake Browning for a season, if you're unable to retain him, he can end up being that long-term backup for Joe Burrow. So having that backup is important, and I think Austin Reed can at least compete long-term in that role. So let's look at the roster. After the draft, everything we've been able to do, the offense line was a big prime priority for me. Adding in Graham Barton here to that interior as a day one impact, a day one starter at that left guard position. Could be the long-term center, depending, like I said, if Ted Cross comes back on a contract or not. But Barton solidifies that interior. I think he's going to be an all-pro within by maybe the end of his rookie contract. At minimum, I see him as a Pro Bowl player. And then we added in Caden Wallace to potentially be the right tackle of the future. At least give you some depth at that right tackle position and more competition. But with Trent Brown on a one-year contract, I think Caden Wallace would be a great understudy and hopefully the future right tackle. Quarterback, we had in our backup of the future, maybe. Of course, if Jake Browning's unable to be retained, Austin Reed, at least as a quarterback three, would be a nice option. Some more depth at the running back position, receiving capability in Blake Watson. And then a couple of big additions in the receiving core, at least in my opinion, Roman Wilson would be a day one impact. I feel like he'd be a day one starter in the slot with that speed and the reliable hands. Be a really good chain mover for this offense. Eric Hall from Iowa, formerly of Michigan. So maybe adding another Wolverine, kind of, in that tight end room to be the long-term receiving back with Drew Sample. On the defense side of the ball, we add in the monster in the middle into Vondre Sweat. Going to be that, hopefully, DJ Reader replacement. At least get some more competition and a good run defender behind P.J. Hill in a rotational basis because that's what he's probably going to be early on in his career. Edge-wise, we had in Cedric Johnson has some more depth off the edge. Always need some edge depth. Cornerback, we had in some more depth there as well. Quantez Stiggers coming in from the Toronto Argonauts. I love that. That's a great name. But anyway, we also, I would say, had a veteran in free agency. I think that's a big time priority for them. So that's something I would look to do. And then finally, we add in a linebacker for the future, at least to be a competition and more special teams help. And Darius Muwisau from UCLA. So that is going to do it here for the Cincinnati Bengals. Let me know what you think. Agree or disagree? What would you do differently for this Bengals team? Really hyped up, though. Hopefully Joe Pearl can stay healthy because this team has got plenty of potential to be a Super Bowl team next season. Hope you guys have a really good day. My name's G-Sling. I'm doing my thing, and I'll talk to you later.